Hi again. Today we're going to take a look at the properties of acids and bases. And we'll begin by taking a look at their general properties, just a comparison between the two. First off, we can have a taste test, not perhaps the most scientific, but in the early days, acids were based on their tastes being sour and bases bitter. More scientific method is to take a look at perhaps their pH value, a measure indirectly of their hydrogen ion concentration. Acids with a, are classified as substances with a pH of less than seven and bases a pH higher than seven. I should make note at this point that that though is at 25 degrees Celsius, that pH value will change with temperature. Also the behavior of acids and bases can be based on how they behave with certain plant or chemical dyes. Litmus, a plant dye turns red in the presence of acids and blue in the presence of bases. And similarly, a chemical indicator phenolphthalein goes from colorless to pink in a basic condition. You may not be familiar, but with the plant hydrangea, it also behaves differently in acidic and basic conditions. In acidic conditions, the hydrange plant will turn a blue color and in alkali or basic conditions, more of a pink color. Table 22 in your IB data booklet also has the behavior of several chemical indicators and their color changes. Let's take a look at their reactions. First of all, a metal and an acid most metals will react with an acid to produce a soluble ionic salt and hydrogen gas. The exceptions being many of the coinage metals, uh, silver, gold, platinum, uh, they don't tend to react much with acids. In my example, I'm gonna take a look at hydrogen chloride or hydrochloric acid reacting with iron. The first thing I'm gonna notice, there's an exchange between the iron and the hydrogen, a single displacement reaction. I begin by exchanging their partners and writing them out as the products, but I'm not finished yet. The next step is to check the charges of that ionic salt. Iron typically has a charge of plus two and chlorine minus one. Applying the crisscross rule or balancing their charges, I'm gonna to need to have two chlorines to balance that. Also, the hydrogen that's produced is diatomic because it's hydrogen gas. So at this point, I have uh, the equation completed, but it's not balanced. So I'll proceed to balance the equation by putting a two in front of the hydrochloric acid and completing their states. The iron two chloride that's produced is the salt and most ionic salts are soluble in water. Hence I've designated it as being aqueous and the hydrogen is mentioned earlier, a gas. Let's take a look now at what happens with an acid and a metal carbonate or a metal hydrogen carbonate. In this case, you produce a salt, carbon dioxide and water. The example I'm going to use is potassium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. Again, the metal and the hydrogen will undergo a displacement, switching partners. So now the potassium will be with the chlorine and the hydrogen with the carbonate. Again, I'm going to check their charges. In the case of potassium chloride, the plus one minus one balance perfectly. However, the hydrogen and the carbonates don't balance. So again, I'll apply the crisscross rule or balance their charges and I will get the formula then for the hydrogen carbonate is H2CO3. Now hydrogen carbonate is not a particularly stable substance. It will break down very quickly and form a water molecule and carbon dioxide gas. So at this point, I've completed the equation again, but it's not balanced. So I'll proceed to balance it by putting two in front of the hydrochloric acid and the potassium chloride and complete their states. Potassium chloride, my ionic salt, again, tends to be soluble in water and is designated as being aqueous. The final type of reaction are neutralization reactions between an acid and a base. And all neutralization reactions are exothermic in nature. In my example, I'm gonna take acetic acid and sodium hydroxide. Again, the hydrogen and the sodium will exchange. Note that it's the hydrogen though at the end of the acetic acid molecule, as mentioned in an earlier program, as it is the one that develops a positive one charge. So upon exchanging, I now have the acetate ion with the sodium and the hydrogen with the hydroxide. Again, I'll check their charges, and we can see in this case, the hydrogen and hydroxide perfectly balance, and the minus one that's associated with acetate and plus one with sodium also balance. Now, Acetate's not one of those ions you may be familiar with, but I, looking at the reactant, knowing that hydrogen is plus one, I was able to deduce that the acetate ion had a charge of minus one. 
So I've completed their formulas here and now proceed to balance them. And in this case, the equation is already balanced with coefficients of one. And I'll just put in their states. Sodium acetate, the ionic solid produced in this case, is also going to be soluble in water. So here are a few for you to try. Why don't you pause the video at this point and then play it back after you've had a chance to try them. So the first reaction, a carbonate with an acid should make carbon dioxide and water. The second reaction, an acid and a metal should produce hydrogen and a salt. And the final reaction is a neutralization reaction with the triprotic phosphoric acid. Congratulations if you got these.